You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. If you look around, there are so many ways to make a difference. At Capella University, our FlexPath format gives you a different way to earn your degree. Take courses at your speed. Move on whenever you're ready. Education should fit your life. Learn more at capella.edu. Hi everybody and welcome back to Who Did What Now, the history podcast that's not your history class. Betty Sword, little bits of history that don't fit in anywhere else, with me, your host, Katie Charlewood, horse again and reader of books. Well, there's currently a storm raging where I am. We lost electricity, uh, we, we couldn't heat our houses, we ran out of water and... um. Many trampolines were lost this week, so even the schools closed, which really tells you something. And we were warned, yet again, don't make unnecessary journeys, don't take risks on treacherous roads, and don't swim in the sea. (sighs) That's um, a Ray Theresa Manion joke for there. So, (laughs) Uh, this week, um, as it turns out, I have been... (laughs) Irritating a lot, a lot of gammons, because people don't like it when you point out what a piece of trash Winston Churchill was. And you know what's really funny to me is that people seem to think, generally men, an overwhelming amount of white men have felt the need to come and tell me, A, how amazing Winston Churchill was, and B, that I'm a communist. Um, I'm like, sir... I'm a Republican. Um, an Irish Republican, by the way, not an American Republican. You know, no. And I find this whole situation really funny because, yet again, women aren't making these comments. Apparently stating that massacring a bunch of innocent civilians because you don't like communism is neither a good plan nor an ethical way of being. Because I'm anti-Churchill, They seem to think I'm pro-Stalin. And listen, I've seen pictures of young Stalin with his moustache and his beautiful, beautiful face, but he's also a class A cunt. And frankly, I'm not really into people who are into genocide. You know what I mean? Thank you for your opinions, boys. It's going to fuel my fire for a long time. But like one of the guys who was arguing with me played polo. Now... Not water polo, because I could, I could accept water polo. I mean, on a horse with that weird croquet mallet thing, polo. Like, Prince Charles played polo. I, I, I'm sorry, but for some reason I don't seem to think you understand the struggle of the common man or woman or gender non-exclusive person. When you play fucking polo, what? The only acceptable polo is a mint, and even then, you're on thin ice. So naturally, I wanted to talk about an incident during the Cold War. To clarify, the Cold War was less of a war and more of a dick measuring contest. But anyway, uh, let me tell you about this story. This glorious, fantastic story, which sounds like it was made up, but actually happened. Okay, so, and I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, quit your jibber-jabber, in fact me, in fact you, I, well, but first we have to get our source on. Okay, so our sources come from Encyclopedia Astronautica by Mark Wade, Thor Abelstar from Gunter Space Page by Gunter Krebs, Orbital Debris, a chronology from NASA. So between 1960 and In 1965, America created this expendable launch system made up of PGM-17 Thor missiles and, like, this Able Star upper stage. What does that mean? I'm not entirely sure. I'm not a rocket scientist. And because of this, it was known as Thor Epsilon and the much cooler name of Thor Able Star. Which, but, okay, okay, say what you want about America. They name things with pride. And confidence. 
So over this five year period, the US launched 19 Thor Able Star rockets, four of which failed, one of which we're going to discuss today. Technically, it's the second failure. The mission was to send up a navigation satellite for the US Navy. On the 30th of November, 1960. Unfortunately, this didn't go too well. You see, as the rocket was heading up, it signaled trouble before it got too high. And as such, the US were like, fuck this for a game of soldiers and hit the self-destruct button. Thus resulting in a controlled explosion of the rocket. And that's an issue in itself. Being a part of a royal family might seem enticing. But more often than not, it comes at the expense of everything else, like your freedom, your privacy, and sometimes even your head. Wondery's new podcast, Even the Royals, pulls back the curtain on royal families, past and present, from all over the world, to show you the darker side of what it means to be royalty. From icons like Grace Kelly, Oscar-winning actress turned Princess of Monaco, who the world saw as the ultimate good girl. She mastered playing a happy wife and mother, but beneath it all, she was desperately lonely. Grace spent her whole life working towards perfection, and it ultimately cost her her happiness. Or King Ludwig II from Bavaria. He was only 18 when his father died, leaving the crown to him and a duty to rule that he never wanted. He refused to lead, and used the funds from the royal treasury to further his extreme love of opera but this choice eventually cost him the crown and his life. Follow Even the Royals on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. You can binge Even the Royals ad-free right now on Wondery Plus. The second issue was that the rocket blew up over Cuba, surprisingly close to Guantanamo Bay, and the debris from this rocket, they start falling down with like chunks and pieces landing on the sweet, sweet soil of Cuba. Naturally, a rocket exploding over a country that, you know, you invaded at one point and that you currently had a very strained relationship with, probably not a good idea. Zero out of ten would not recommend. So yeah, war was threatened because this is an international incident. Also, in addition, furthermore, the Cuban government just starts collecting all of these pieces of the missile, all of this debris, and subsequently sells it, sold sold the pieces off to, shall we say, enemies of the US? Shall we say enemies of the US? So they send Thor's engine off to the USSR, and the thrust vectors go to China. So in general, this is an embarrassment for the US, and a fucking win for Cuba. However, it's not all fun and games because Fidel Castro files a complaint with the United Nations because this explosion, this incident with the Thor Able Star rocket, he believed was, and I quote, further evidence of Yankee aggression. You see, this may seem like a victimless situation, but there was one victim. A cow named Rujina. Yes. You see, America killed a Cuban cow with a failed satellite launch. As a result of this, hundreds of students, hundreds of students congregate outside the American embassy in Cuba. And they are straight up protesting this. They are... (laughs) They are chanting, with cows or without cows, the revolution will win. And as part of the protest, this is fucking good, as part of the protest, they bring cows and bulls with them. (laughs) With one of the cows has a sign that says, Eisenhower, you murdered one of my sisters. They put a sign on a cow. So after this, the information gets like a little vague, a little obtuse. Um... Allegedly, the US, the United States of America, paid Cuba $2 million in compensation for the death of Rojina the cow. At least that's the official take on it. That's that's quite a chunk of change for, like, a bovine. That's quite a chunk of change for, you know, 
a bovine creature. <sighs> and it has been suggested that maybe, just maybe, it was less to do about, you know, killing the cow. It was less about the cow casualty and more about the fact that it violated the nation's airspace and didn't want to be accused of war crimes. And my favourite part of this story, what my favourite, favourite part of the story, <sighs> apparently, Rujina, the cow, <gasps> Cuba, <laughs> okay, Cuba gave Rujina, the cow, a state funeral. Like, that's fantastic. That is I really hope that's true. Uh, if anybody knows anybody from Cuba who may remember the state funeral of Rohina the cow, please let me know because I really want that to be true. Oh, okay. At the end of the day, oh yeah, like to prevent this incident from happening again, all future Thor Able Star launches had their flight paths like modified so that they would avoid passing over Cuba because A, they didn't want to have another incident, and B, they really didn't want Cuba selling off their technological advancements. Anywho, my voice is starting to go again. Oh jeez. So I will actually chat to you next time. So I'm, so we'll talk um next time. And join me again on Tuesday, where we will have another full episode where it will be time for a new episode and I'm actually really excited about this one. Don't forget you can follow me on all my social media, who did what now pod. And uh, yeah, don't forget to rate and review five stars. Pity me for my lack of voice. And uh, yeah, I'll chat. I'll be back on Tuesday with more fun filled facts and history stuff. Adios, au revoir, au revoir, my friends. Bye bye.